Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. We praise you, Almighty God, for the circle of light that marks our days in preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, kindle within us the fire of your Spirit, that we may be light shining in the darkness. Enlighten us with your grace, that we may welcome others as you have welcomed us. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How about that? Second Sunday in Advent already. We're into December. Can you imagine that? Seems like this year has really either moved very quickly or not so quickly at all, depending on what's going on in your life. Um, I guess I'm surprised that we've made it to December um, and, and happy in, in many respects. Um, as we move into the future, there are more opportunities that will be available to us, especially after the vaccine is distributed. You know, we can see the end of the tunnel. We still have a ways to go yet, but, but hope is on the horizon. And certainly Christmas is coming, and who doesn't like Christmas? And hopefully you're going to have a wonderful Christmas this year. It'll be different. It'll be different from years gone by. But Christmas is always a little different anyway, isn't it? And this year may be kind of more different but it'll still be special, it'll still be blessing. And while we are waiting for the celebration of our Lord's return as a babe in a manger, we continue to focus on the return of our Lord and Savior um, as judge of all, as master of the universe, as, as the sole king of all things that are and were and should be. And in the midst of that, in the midst of that we go back in time we go back in time to John the Baptist, who is perhaps one of my favorite people in the New Testament. He's one of my favorite people because I tend to think most Lutherans would be offended by the sight of John the Baptist. He was not a, probably an attractive man. He wore clothing that made you think that perhaps he hung out in caves or in a, stall, a stable or someplace out of, of the normal realm. Uh, he ate food which most people would not eat. Um, and he probably spoke in a loud voice because most of the things you read in scripture almost need to be shouted. And so I see this, this, this figure, this strange man of God, shouting at people, warning them about the coming of, of God's uh, last day and encouraging them, forcing them to confess their sins out of their own guilt and out of their own wickedness and foolishness. 
And curiously enough, people come. The Word of God touches the hearts of many, and those who perhaps were foolish or proud or arrogant or wicked, they hear the message. They come to the water. They are baptized, confessing their sins. Lives are changed. And people begin to think, you know, John must be the Messiah. He must be the Messiah. He's speaking God's word. People's lives are being changed. This must be the coming of a new age. And in the midst of this, John, a remarkable fellow, true to himself and true to God, tells the world this important message. The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. What a wonderful thing it is to see both the power of John the Baptist and the Word of God to change lives and to recognize that it's only a prelude to something greater, someone greater, some love greater that will happen in the future. The people of Jesus' day did not have long to wait after John the Baptist to see the Son of Man and the Son of God begin His ministry among them to see his miracles, to hear his words, to understand that demons could be exercised, that lives could be changed, and that ultimately God's power was coming into the world. And that power continues to come into the world through the Holy Spirit. We feel it when we gather together. We feel it, we, we know it in our hearts and minds when we, when we sing hymns, when we pray together when at times we're even able to share the sacrament. You and your homes can feel it, even if you don't necessarily are joined with us here in the church. You know it's real and true. God has come into your life, and the power of God continues to come into your life, to strengthen you, to bring you healing, and to renew your hope, and to allow you to love as God loves. My hope for us as we hear the scripture, as we recognize that the message of God's love still needs to be said and still needs to be heard and still needs to be changed. The future is bright even if we don't see it. There is one coming, more mighty than us, more kind than us, more just than us, more peace-loving than us. He is coming and will be here soon. We'll celebrate his birth in a manger. His Holy Spirit will guide us in his path. And ultimately, Christ will come again. That's all good news. As we prepare for Christmas, let us focus also on our Lord's return in power. There's much good news we need to share. Let us share it with one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Let us pray. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch, so that all creation can declare your praise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Speak words of truth and comfort to all who suffer from discrimination, bigotry, and injustice. Give us a vision of a world where everyone is valued and treated fairly. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Leading God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth. Sustain and support people with physical and intellectual disabilities. Accommodate disability advocates who work for a world accessible to all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. Comfort those who grieve. Be a companion to those who are lonely. Tend those who are struggling with depression. And gather all people into your healing embrace. We especially pray for everyone on our prayer list. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness and taught us to continue in this faithful work. Make their lives generous and an example to all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray as our Lord taught his disciples how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.